Hi there, it's Mr. Jonathan with the Osceola Library System, and today is Bite Sized History. We're going to be talking about the Hindenburg Disaster. In the 1930s, airships looked like the future of travel. They offered the ultimate luxury and could travel from Europe to North America in two days. Built in 1936 by the Zeppelin Company, the Hindenburg was the world's biggest airship, and it was almost as large as the Titanic. The Nazi government provided money for the completion after the Zeppelin company ran out, and this is why the rudder of the Hindenburg has the Nazi swastika painted on it. The ship's frame is made of metal, which prevents it from collapsing, and the ship is covered in fabric and painted with a silver chemical that protects the fabric from the sun. Here you can see the inside of the ship. The rudders swivel from left to right to turn the airship, and the elevators swivel up and down to level the airship. Sixteen giant bags called gas cells will hold the hydrogen that lifts the airship. Many airships use helium, but America controls the supply of helium and isn't selling any to Germany because of the current political climate. Hydrogen is more flammable, and hydrogen is what fills the gas cells of the Hindenburg and will ultimately contribute to the disaster. The amenities on board the Hindenburg include a fine dining room with fine china and fresh cut flowers at each table, sleeping cabins, a lounge with a grand piano made out of aluminum instead of wood to save on weight, shower rooms, and a grand promenade where passengers could walk and take in the sights below. The Hindenburg had a crew of 61, including five captains who worked in shifts, electricians, mechanics, stewards, cooks, and a doctor. The Hindenburg was built to take wealthy passengers across the Atlantic Ocean, and only first-class first tickets were sold. There was no second-class or steerage, and each ticket cost $400, which would be about $7,000 in today's money when you adjust it for inflation. Can you imagine paying $7,000 just to get somewhere? You wouldn't have any money left over for vacation. On May 6, 1937, 36 passengers and 61 crewmen boarded the Hindenburg to fly to the U.S. from Frankfurt. On arrival in Lakehurst, Manchester, there's a bang and a jolt, and people on the ground see a flame bloom from the ship's tail. Within seconds, the ship is engulfed in flames. It takes only 32 seconds for the ship to sink to the ground and for the metal frame to collapse. And this is because the gas cells had hydrogen, which is very flammable. Radio reporter Herbert Morrison is on site to report the landing, and he became famous for his dramatic reporting of the disaster, where he uttered the immortal line, Oh, the humanity! Inside the Hindenburg as it goes down, furniture goes sliding across the floor and people look for something to hold on to. Amazingly, 62 of the 97 people aboard managed to survive, jumping from the windows or escaping through rips in the fabric of the ship. To this day, the cause of the crash is unknown, but it may have been static electricity from the storm that set fire to gas leaking from the vent in the top of the ship. And this disaster actually ended the era of great airships because the public lost confidence in them. Here you can see some books that we offer at the library if you would like to find out more information about this tragedy. We have You Wouldn't Want to Be on the Hindenburg, a transatlantic trip you'd rather skip. And we also have one of the I Survive series books, I Survive the Hindenburg Disaster, 1937. Be sure to check those out at the library. And now we're going to try and replicate the Hindenburg Disaster with an activity that I'm going to do. Make sure you don't follow along because it's not safe. However, I'm going to be using a helium balloon instead of a hydrogen balloon because it was easier to find and also because it's a little bit safer. Come along! Keep in mind, this is not an activity to replicate at home, even if you're a grown-up. Don't do this activity at home, and certainly not if you're a kid. So I have my balloon, and it is filled with helium, which you can tell because it is doing what? It is floating. If it was filled with air, it wouldn't be floating, right? So 
So I have my balloon filled with helium and I'm gonna try and get my lighter lit here. Here we go. And... Whoa! Very combustible, wasn't it? That would be terrible if it was an airship and you were a passenger on that. All right, let's do an activity we can all do together. Guten Tag! Now we're gonna do an activity you can do at home. What you will need is some helium balloons. I got mine in the colors of the German flag. Isn't that fun? So we have red, yellow, and black. And you're going to need some clay. I'm using Model Magic because it's lighter and it sticks to itself. You're going to need some cardstock to cut out a little rudder, which kind of looks like a trapezoid shape, only taller. And you're going to need two bendy straws and then scissors. All right? So, what we're going to do first is we're going to take our two bendy straws and keep one straight. You can go ahead and bend the other, and we're going to insert the first bendy straw into the other one. This way they're connected, and I'll go ahead and push them together like that. And now I am going to tape our rudder, and I want our rudder facing the same way as the bend in the straw. So, I will take my piece of tape and go ahead and put it on my rudder and then I'll wrap it around our straw and then I can fold my tape so that uh, it doesn't ruin my rudder shape. All right and then we're gonna take our modeling clay and we're gonna put a little on the front where our straw bends. If we put too much when we test our airship uh, we can decide if we want to take some off or if we want to put more. We can experiment because this is a science activity. So if we don't like the results, we can go back and try again. And we're going to wrap the second piece of clay about three quarters of the way towards the rudder over by the straight side of the straw. So now we have the base of our airship and what we need is our balloon. And you can tell that this is filled with helium because it floats, right? So I'm going to go ahead and cut the strings off of my balloon, but I'll make sure that I'm holding on to it. Otherwise, it would float right up to the ceiling and I wouldn't be able to catch it, right? All right. Tuck that under my arm so I don't lose it and get my first piece of tape ready, a nice long piece. And I'm going to take the base of my airship and go ahead and tape it to the side of the balloon. So I want the tie where the uh, balloon is tied at the end facing the same part of the rudder. So here we go. Tape number one and then one more. Tape number two. So now I have my airship and what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get it to go directly straight as if it's on an across the ocean journey. You guys ready? I'll go this way. Here we go. We'll test this one and then we'll test our other airship and see how we did. Oh, so that one kind of hovers. That's great. The clay will eventually bring it back down. But here we go. It's going to launch this one too. Say bon voyage. Bon voyage. You can do that one at home. Thanks so much. This was so much fun. And the fun with balloons is that when you're done with them, guess what? All the humanity! Bye-bye!